Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Hagerstown. We are so glad you are here with us today because you are right where you belong. glorious morning why ask for anything more I follow where my heart leads walk through this open door I've always been a seeker felt I was alone now in this room full of smiling faces I know I found my this is where joy lives, this is where love is, this is a place where I am strong, this is where eyes meet, where kindred hearts beat, I am right where I belong. Here in this place I'm accepted, I'm welcome just as I am. I'm ready to be inspired, to reach out a helping hand. This is a new beginning, I trust in the mystery. Now that my heart is open, there's no place I'd rather be. This is where joy lives, this is where love is, this is the place where I am strong. This is where eyes meet, where kindred hearts beat. I am right where I belong. This is where joy lives. This is where love is. This is a place where I am strong. This is where eyes meet, where kindred hearts beat. I am right where I belong. I am right where I belong. I am right where. Good morning, and welcome to Unity of Hagerstown, now that I'm all mic'd up. <laughs> we are uh, continuing to honor Jewish American Heritage Month, and we have a quote here. Learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Yeah. So I invite you to join me in our opening prayer as we kind of settle in and just allow the chair to support us allow our body to relax the busyness of the morning to fade we become fully present in this beautiful day fully present in the place where joy lives within each and every heart so we open to that joy here and now and we give thanks for this beautiful day for coming together and we set the intention to be open to that activity of spirit within, leading us one, one step at a time. To be open to the love that flows through each heart. To greet each person as if they were a sacred spiritual being, which they are and to shower this day with appreciation and thanks. And so it is, amen. <clears throat> and now if you will join me in our mission statement together. Unity of Hagerstown, a welcoming community, embraces spiritual awakening through affirmative prayer and meditation creating a positive path of abundant living for all. And now we have the reading of the Daily Word with Sharon Bender.
that's okay. <laughs> Good morning again. Good morning. <laughs> this is uh, Sunday, May 21st. Is that the 20? 21st. Protection is the word. And as I practice the presence of God, I feel secure. There is only one power and one presence in the universe and in my life. God, omnipotent, omni omniscient, and om omnipresent is not only all around me, God is within me. As I take this truth into my heart, I feel calm and secure. The circumstances of the world have no lasting power over me. God is greater and more enduring than anything I may be called to face. I have within me the power to feel God's protecting presence at any time. As I pray, I affirm the strength and power of God are mine to call upon. I can use these divine powers to move beyond that which may scare or intimidate me. In renewed faith and deep security, I move bravely forward. The scripture is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And now if you'll um, say with me the saying for today, as I practice the presence of God, I feel secure. And think about that for a second. And again, as I practice the presence of God, I feel secure. Thank you, Sharon. And now we have another song. found what you wanted you wouldn't hesitate whether choosing your job or choosing your mate but if you don't put some time love and energy into yourself you end up leaving your decisions to somebody else I want to know that life is a gift to you so why would you give it away you can settle for a fast food restaurant or go for the sumptuous buffet oh whose life do you think it is anyway you are the master of your future it's not all left to fate just keep moving forward we learn from our mistakes and even if it takes a little while to find your own way well you can do it till you get it right like bill murray in groundhog day i want to know now life is a gift to you so why would you give it away you can settle for a fast food restaurant or go for that sumptuous buffet oh whose line do you think it is anyway who are we not to be all that we could Every step that we 
take with intention and faith brings us closer to the real you and me. I want to know now, whose life do you think it is anyway? You know that life is a gift to you, so why would you give it away? Well, you can settle for the fast food restaurant, but I bet you'd want to go for the sumptuous buffet. Life, do you think it is anyway? Yeah, whose life do you think it is anyway? Woo! Yes. That's, thank you, thank you. That's a great song. So we have a moment now to greet our neighbors. And again, just as a gentle reminder, not everybody likes to be hugged. So if you would prefer a handshake, just put your hand out there. If you don't want any contact at all, that is perfectly okay. Just say hi <laughs> or, or make it clear that you don't want any contact. Um, so additionally, I'll ring the chimes. And when you hear the chime, please take your seat. So every other, everybody else can hear the chime, too, and take their seats, okay? Yay! All righty. Greet your neighbor, my friends. And for those of you who are watching on Facebook or YouTube, I invite you to put something down in the comments. We love you. We love hearing from you. We bless you. And it doesn't matter if you're watching it Sunday morning or Wednesday evening. Just go ahead and put a comment and let us know what you think of, of this service and Unity of Hagerstown. We love you. Okay, so uh, we have an opportunity to welcome new members into this community. And <clears throat> actually, that was supposed to be two parts. <laughs> new member welcome and then the everything else. But I'm going to invite Jay and Annie, Amy Vanette and Karen Mulholland to come forward, having completed the, the membership class. <laughs> yeah. And this is not a test. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with a, a reading from Matthew chapter 8, verse 20. When two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And we know that that Christ consciousness within each of us is amplified when we are together. And now while membership is not a requirement to be part of the unity of Hagerstown at all, it's an outward sign of commitment. So for those of us or those of you who have decided to become members of this community, you are outwardly expressing your commitment as well to God, to your own spiritual growth, and to the expression of love that is Unity of Hagerstown. So Unity membership is kind of unique. The most important requirement for membership is the desire to know God and understand and love and follow those spiritual teachings, those um, truth teachings, if you will. Rather than being a system of worship, unity is a way of life, and members are asked to do their best to live the truth teachings on a daily basis. The objective of unity affiliation is to help people live more effective and spirit-centered lives. So, and you can just answer with, Yes or no, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Do you have a basic understanding of unity teachings? Are you willing to make God a priority in your life? Are you willing to keep this community in your daily prayer life? Do you recognize that together with all the congreg congregants in this community, 
we are working to establish a welcoming space where healing is found and awareness is deepened and where each one of us plays a vital role. Okay. And now the congregation, I'm going to ask you as a community to affirm with me these promises to our new members. Okay, together. We will support your service in this spiritual community. We will always see the truth of your being one with spirit. We will always love you. And now we have something very special. <laughs> A certificate of membership, my friends. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. You. Welcome, welcome. Mm. Oh, happy to have you here. Mm. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Okay, please be seated. Yes, welcome. Okay, so we have a guest speaker today, but she's well known to each and every one of you, I'm pretty sure, and that is the beautiful Paula Jelanas. Let's give her a big welcome here. Oh. yourselves while I'm getting ready. <laughs> Can you hear me? Good. All right. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. That's from Galatians 5.13. So as Memorial Day approaches, the subject of freedom sometimes comes up in conversations. Freedom has so many lenses through which it can be seen. Freedom to voice our opinion without fear of retaliation. Freedom to live in communities we desire freedom to choose our partners, and the freedom to expect, express our spiritual beliefs without fear of judgment. Of all of our freedoms, the most important freedom is to express who we are, to be true to ourselves. Janis Joplin, in one of her songs, the line is, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. That statement could be interpreted that if we're free, we have everything if we need, that we need. That if our freedom is taken away, we lose everything. But our internal freedom, being untethered by anything or anyone or any place, is ours. When we belong to ourselves and are content within, there's nothing that can be taken from us. Maya Angelou says, you're free when you realize you belong no place. You belong every place, no place at all. The price is high and the reward is great. The reward is being your true self. So what does it mean to be my true self? Is it who I was when I was 25 or 55 or older? Is it who I was when I became a spouse or a parent? Is it who I am or was when I was at my job? Or is it someone who I very rarely let anyone see, even those closest to me? From um, the revealing word on truth unity, it says, Christ, the divine idea, is the true self of every person. The fulfillment of self is accomplished as everyone puts on the Christ the Christ consciousness. When asked who do you are, how do you respond to that question? Is it the focus on your career, your place in your family, or maybe you're even unsure of that answer? 
and how much has the culture influenced who you are? The actress Marlo Thomas created Free to Be, You and Me. It started out as an album and then it was a book and eventually a TV special. Free to Be suggested a world in which every boy could grow up to be his own man and every woman could grow, every girl could grow up to be her own woman. The land of free to be was a place where girls could grow up to be mommies and doctors. And if they didn't want to get married, they didn't have to. It was a place where boys could cry and they could play with dolls, dolls without fear of scorn. It was a place where girls and boys could be friends no matter how they looked or acted. And if you're part of a certain generation, those ideas may have certainly influenced how you developed as an individual. So do you believe in the land of free to be? Or are we stranded in the land of past beliefs and stories? Our cultural and familial, familial influences can really be hard to escape. And who we truly are has nothing to do with those stories or beliefs that we've picked up over time. Who we truly are is perfect, divine, and radiant. Second Corinthians says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So if we change those words a little bit to fit more metaphysically, it would say, now, the I am is the divine mind. And where the divine mind of the I am is, there is freedom. The ultimate goal is to be free to belong to ourselves. That process to belong to ourselves is sacred, and it is a spiritual process. However, the process of being free to be true to ourselves, to belong to ourselves can be a challenge. That process of examining what we hold on to from all of the stories that we've been told, good and bad, and the beliefs that we've been chosen to hold on to that are true and are not true, they no longer serve. Those stories can have a strong hold on us, can't they? Yeah, they stop us from seeing the divinity of who we are, and we may not even recognize the influence of them over us. So I, I suspect that many of you are aware of that internal critic. Anybody have one besides me? <laughs> mm. She offers a constant dialogue of comparison, criticism, contempt, and she's subtle and she's never-ending. She often speaks so quietly that we don't even notice her until we stop and listen to that internal abuse that she puts out. To truly hear her story, we need to be still and go into the silence. And have you ever really listened and taken time to write down what she says in that little voice of hers? She, she rarely offers words of encouragement or affirmation. And if she were real, how many of us would have a friend like her sitting by us? Probably not. And yet we carry with her all the time. So what are the, some of the statements of your internal critic? One of the steps in freely being ourselves is to sift through those stories. Acknowledge that maybe some of those stories kept us safe for a time and now it's time to release them. Keep those that are of love and release the, wet, the rest as if we are weeding the garden of our heart. Then we move on to the most freeing and yet for some what can be the most scary thing, step of allowing ourselves to be truly seen, to get naked, so to speak, to be vulnerable enough to allow ourselves to be free in the present moment, to say or do what needs to be done. 
even when our knees are quivering. It takes great courage to shed years of armoring and protection that we put on ourselves so we would not feel hurt when others have tried to abuse or um, shame us. In the past, we have accepted shame or abuse from others, maybe because it kept us safe. And ultimately, we do want to belong and connect with other people. Brene Brown in Atlas of the Heart says, True belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being part of something and standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging does not require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. The researcher um, Sander Schmidt Bunkers suggests freedom encompasses the human capacity to co-create itself in the moment, making choices and being responsible for those choices. Richard Rohr, who's a Franciscan priest and founder of the Center for Action and Contemplation, says, there's nothing to prove and nothing to protect. I am who I am, and that's enough. Rohr talks about our false self, our ego, and our true self. Another way to say it is the ego and the higher self, the human self, and the divine self. These are all aspects of who we are. I believe that when we come into the world, we have that divine self awake and aware. And think about it. How many of us like to see babies, right? Their purity, their spontaneity, their ability to be in the moment, that one moment of sheer laughter and joy, and the next moment, sadness and tears and crying. They're, they don't filter their experiences. And most of us love being around babies. And I think part of that is because it, at some level, reminds us who we are. And life happens, doesn't it? And through certain life experiences and that sense of self-protection that develops and that self-survival that comes, then the ego takes over. There's a story from one of the books on Chicken Soup for the Soul, and it's about a three- or four-year-old and her she has a brand new baby sister. And she keeps telling mom, I want to go in and I want to talk with her. I want to talk with her by myself. And you know, it's a brand new baby. Mom's a little bit apprehensive. So finally, after a couple months, she says, okay, you can talk to her. But mom, you know, like gives her the idea of being all alone, but stands at the door and listens. And she walks up to the crib and she says, Ella, Ella. Tell me what God looks like because I'm starting to forget. Every time I hear that. Whew. So Richard Rohr goes on and he says, I think that's the one. Yep. You can tell I didn't practice these slides, did I? The human ego prefers anything just about anything to falling or changing or dying. The ego is that part of you that loves the status quo, even if it's not working. <laughs> it attaches to the past and the pres present, and it fears the future. He goes on to say that the ego knows itself by comparison. And for some people, that's where they spend their lives, working so hard to make sure that they have the best, that they're the first, and that everybody likes them. Ultimately, though, they're betraying themselves. How could we possibly become who we are or do anything in life when the ego has that full-time job that's trying to get us to survive? That's what its job is. 
survival. So maybe you've done this. You find yourself on the road to self-discovery and come up with, against something that's good. Nice idea. I think I'll move in that direction. And then for some reason, you allow your eager to take over, take you on a little bit of a detour where you start tearing yourself apart, comparing yourself to others, or you lose focus and you forget that you belong to you because you are so practiced at belonging to others first. Some of us are so busy betraying and taking care of others that thinking that is what we are supposed to be doing, taking care of everybody else, that we fail to take the time to focus on ourselves and who we are. Maya Angelou has a poem I'm sorry, um, Mary Oliver has a poem, and it's called The Journey, and I'd like to read it. One day, you finally know what you had to do when you began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advices, though the whole house began to tremble, and you felt the tug, the old tug at your ankles. Mend my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do though the wind pried its stiff fingers at the very foundations. Though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough in a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voice behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice which you sh slowly recognized as your own that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the one thing you, own, the one thing you could, to de determine to save the only life you could save. Richard Rohr says, as we grow in true freedom by, in relationship, we lose by losing and finding. Generally, something happens in our lives where we emotionally and mentally, spiritually, or physically are wounded. So can you recall a time when that, in your humanity, when that happened, when you were deeply wounded, and yet, from that event, you found yourself in a new light? We're like the prodigal son. We must go out into the world, let go of our ego, that false self, and then come home to find within ourselves the true self, the divine mind. There's so many psychologists and leaders and others who in various ways say, we must be connected to ourselves to truly be connected to or love one another. When we are truly connected to ourselves, excuse me, until we are truly connected to ourselves, until we allow ourselves to be free enough to take that journey and find ourselves within. Who we are to others, what we offer to them, we're incomplete. The road to freedom is the one that takes courage and it's filled with great joys. And all of this, this whole talk, is also reminding us that this is all of the human side of ourselves. Because at spirit level, we are perfect, we are free, and we are divine. Catherine of Genoa, in her little town, would run through the streets and she would shout, In the deepest part of me, I am God! Now think about that. In the 14th century, running through the streets, the part I didn't say is she had little or no clothes on as she was running <laughs> through the streets. But this is true for each of us. And some of us find that to be the greatest challenge. To truly embrace the divinity of who we are. And there's hope. Richard Rohr 
You can tell I kind of like that guy. There's a part of you that is love itself. And that is what we need to embrace. It's already there. Once you move your identity to that level of deep inner contentment, you realize that you are drawing on the life that is much larger than your own and from a much deeper abundance. When we're truly free, we know who we are and we will not negotiate with anyone. Now, we belong to ourselves rather than betraying ourselves to another. If in the past we chose to give in, now we choose to give to ourselves. Through the freedom of loving ourselves enough to be who we are, we step more fully into our sufficiency, into our, pro our uh, prosperity and our abundance. We know that as we are, we are enough. We know that we are that divine radiant spark and we let it shine for the world to see because we're free. So, we are now gonna move into a few moments of meditation. So I'm gonna ask you to get comfortable Take a breath and close your eyes or um, cast your gaze downward, whichever feels most comfortable. Take in a nice deep breath. Breathe in peace and relaxation. And release any tension that you might feel in your body. With each inhale, I feel your body expand to the fullness of who you are in your divinity and your humanity. I'd like you now, in your mind's eye, picture yourself in the garden, the garden of your heart. What do you see? What do you notice there? The flowers, the plants, the bees, the insects, the smells, the luscious colors. All of those are aspects of who you are in your being symbolically. The multitude of colors of who you are and what you bring in every moment. And as you look at your garden, maybe for some of us we see a few weeds, which let's face most gardens have. And some of those are easy to release, some of those a little bit more challenging. And maybe those are like some of the old stories that we picked up of ourselves or ones that were told to us by adults in our lives or media. You have the freedom you have everything within you to release and pull out those weeds, to give more room for your flowers to grow, more room for the love that you have to give, for the gifts of who you are to be shared with this community and beyond.
So I'm going to be quiet for a moment to give you a few moments to sit back and enjoy and relish being in your garden. And we'll do that now in the stillness. a little picture of that garden. You can have that with you anytime. You can always come back to this garden because it's always present within. Take a nice deep breath in. And with that exhale, bring yourself present back to this space, back to this room. And do that one more time. And when you're ready, open your eyes or look up. And we will now have a song by Brenton Patty. a plan. I am free. I clean up my debt. I take time to accept all the beauty around me. I won't walk like a slave today, chained to my regrets, my past, and my future fate. I forgive, I won't forget that I am free in the truth of each moment by the love heaven sent in my heart. I believe that I am free with the bird songs in the morning, bright light from the sun and moon. I feel the wind, the sand, the sea. I won't talk like a slave today, suffering to survive my past and my future fate. I find myself alive and I am free right where I am. A peace of the puzzle, a part of a plan. I am free. I follow my breath, mindful of each step I take on this curious journey. I won't walk like a slave today, chained to my regret my past and my future faith I forgive I won't forget that I am free I am free I am free
to be a better way switching mics. <laughs> thank you for that wonderful song. And Paula, thank you for that powerful message. I, I feel inspired. How about you? Are we inspired enough to say, I thank God for freedom? God for freedom. I thank God I am free. I thank God I am free. I won't walk like a slave today. <laughs> I am free from my past. I'll tell you, I could just do another sermon. I'm not going to, though. <laughs> it's that Southern Baptist coming out in me. <laughs> okay, we do have our, uh, our, our affirmation here. Let's say this together. Wherever I am, I stand on holy ground, for the presence of God is everywhere. And then if you'll join me in our offertory prayer together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for the abundance in my life. And while the offering's being collected, uh, and which we thank and appreciate every single donation here, we have Brett and Patty doing a song, another great song. I'm happy, I'm joyful, I am fulfilled. I'm happy, I'm joyful, I am fulfilled. I'm aware of all my blessings, so much love I can't sit still. I'm happy, I'm joyful, I am fulfilled. Good. I'm happy, I'm joyful, I am fulfilled. Mama, sing that song. <laughs> we do have a few announcements today. Uh, to me, uh, after our service, after we have a little so, little social time, <laughs> I keep wanting to say hour, but it's not going to, oh, I mean, you're welcome to stay that long, but <laughs> after our social time, we have our beautiful healing circle, and I do hope if you're interested, if that intrigues you at all, it's for giving and receiving healing energy, healing love. You don't have to be a practitioner to stick around. You know, you can 
Certainly all practitioners are welcome, but if you just wanted to experience some of that energy, come. Sandy Morell does a beautiful job facilitating that circle. Friday night is our last dinner and a movie night until the fall. So if you're interested in that, the movie is, wait a second, um, I know it's here somewhere, From Stress to Happiness. About a, it's a stressed, uh, stressed out documentary filmmaker goes on a journey of discovery with a pair of monks, one of whom is known as the happiest man in the world. So between beautiful photography and music, he transforms himself and invites us to transform ourselves as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, the theme for the food is loosely Mexican. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and it's not going to be spicy, so if anybody has worries about that, it's going to be very mild. Okay, so there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Please sign up so we know how many to prepare for. And then uh, the Hark Hagerstown Area Religious Coalition Interfaith Team is coming up with a, it's a no-book club meeting. It's bring in, bring in a book or a poem that, you're, that is inspirational to you, and they're going to just talk about the books. And there's, there are flyers for that in the back as well. On the 7th of June, the first Wednesday of every month, we have this wonderful sound bath, which is deeply restorative, I feel. And if you haven't experienced that, I invite you to do that as well. And then on uh, the 10th of June, I know it sounds like there are a lot, but you know, we are an active community. Thank God. Yes. The 10th of June, the Hark Hike, which is uh, a fundraiser for Hark, the Hagerstown Area Religious Coalition, and also Micah's Backpack. So even if you are busy that day, you can still support the team from Unity that's hiking, strolling, really, <laughs> um, uh, 10K. So if you'd like to do that, just go f find your flyers out in the back in the foyer, and um, you can go onto their website and donate under Unitix Walking. Okay? And then, of course, we have Tuesdays. We have our beginner yoga at 6 p.m. yoga stretch at 7.15. And we have a Zion soup kitchen coming up, which means I have a sign-up sheet. Here we go. And if you're interested or able to provide food or and or service, please let us know. And at this point, we're going to say goodbye to our beloved Facebook friends. We bless you. We thank you for your support every week, and whether it's financial or prayers. And we hope to see you in person sometime. Wouldn't that be lovely? Okay. Oh, yeah, you have to hit stop. I forgot. There's no one back there. Arnie, maybe you can go back and hit start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't plan that out. <laughs>